Hi, thank you so much for joining HQ Rio for our, our next training event. This is a briefing called Get Paid Fast. I figure it's kind of an important topic. Uh, this is best practices and, and what to do to submit for orders and IDTs and get paid for them. So I am Lieutenant Colonel Aaron Carl. I'm the Public Affairs Officer for HQ Rio, and I will be taking you through um, all the steps and all the resources that you need, the links you need, the how to's and why's and wherefores um, to make sure that you get, get paid and, and do the uh, AT and IDTs and other orders based work you need to do. Okay, first we are going to talk about the Reserve Pay Office and how it's set up as a part of HQ Rio. Then we're going to go over the systems that we use, MIPERS, UTAPS, and Arrows R. Then I'll talk about short tours, long tours, and IDTs. That pretty much encompasses all the different ways that we work um, as an IMA, and uh, we can go over what you need to know to get paid for doing those things. So let's first talk about the RPO. The Reserve Pay Office is a relatively small office at the headquarters at Buckley, where HQ Rio's offices are. They process all the paperwork for your IDTs, your MPA, RPA, and AT orders. Um, one of the things that's important to note is just because your orders get approved doesn't mean you get paid for them. It doesn't happen automatically. And this can def definitely be different for um, newer IMAs who have come to us from active duty, because that pay just comes every two weeks, boom, 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 well, or twice a month. But every time that you need to get paid as an IMA, you will have to initiate paperwork to do so. So that's what we're going to talk about here. You'll contact the RPO via MyPERS. The, um, I'm going to show you how to find the right part of MyPERS to get the submission links and ask questions or submit your paperwork for pay. But uh, it's always done through MyPERS tickets. There are forms, there are guides, there are links to training like this one on the HQ Rio website, um, as well as on the Rio Connect app. So there's plenty of resource um, and help for you to know what to do to be able to get paid for this stuff. So that's the, um, the URL for the pay page on the HQ Rio website. One of the things that you should know is at least once every week or two weeks at the most, we will update the time hacks on that website to let you know where the RPO is, how many days behind, if you will, they are. So, you know, if it's posted on June 15th, it might say leave submissions or working um, tickets that were submitted on June 12th and long tours are June 10th so that you can get an idea of when you can expect your submission to be processed and sent for pay. The, the bit at the yellow there at the bottom, that's really important for you to understand. The Reserve Pay Office does salary and leave. It has nothing to do with travel reimbursement. So you ever, never want to combine travel reimbursement and pay stuff into the same MyPERS incident. Two totally different offices, two totally different groups of people. When we're talking about the RPO, we're talking about salary or pay and leave, and that's it. And now it's time to talk straight about the reality of the RPO. As I said, if you come to us from active duty, you're used to just getting paid. It just hits your bank account. It's so nice. Um, but as a reservist, you are gonna have to initiate an action to kick off pay every single time. Um, it's also important for you to understand that there are a lot of things having to do with your pay that don't happen at the RPO. They happen at DFAS, at the defense level. And as DFAS ages, more and more work has to be done manually, especially for uh, we singularly distinctive uh, individual reservists to get our pay done correctly. Um, DFAS does not comply with the Air Force standards for processing times. It is a really, really old program. It's I think we calculated two years older than me. So what, 49, all right? Um, the fact that that com same computer program is still being used to process the pay for the entire military is amazing to me. And um, honestly, I have sort of a mental image of it being stuck together with duct tape and chewing gum. Um, because of its age, it's not, a lot of the processes at DFAS don't really take into account the, 
like I said, the distinctive nature of being an IR. So that means more and more stuff has to be done at the RPO manually to process our pay. And it's important for you to keep in mind that there is one RPO technician for every six to 700 reservists. So you can imagine the paperwork load of all the stuff that has to be manually calculated um, whenever we submit anything via MyPERS to the RPO for pay. This is also important, and as a fellow IMA, and I am, I have been an IMA on and off since 2002, and I'm an IMA now, I'm just on orders. About 25% of the submissions that are sent in are returned for really simple errors. Missing signatures, the wrong form, sent to the wrong link, so it's in the wrong queue and sent to the wrong office. Um, that's one of the many reasons that I, I want to do this training for you and, and put those quick guides on the website for you because I need to give you all the tools to be able to submit things correctly the first time. It's going to get you paid faster. It's also going to lighten the workload for our RPO techs. All right. If the RPO comes back and asks you for additional documentation or if you feel like you shouldn't have to submit a color calendar and your 40 A's, whatever, Keep in mind, they're, they're not asking for that additional information for the fun of it. They are held to a very high standard as far as law and regulation that determines everything they do to make sure that government money is being spent correctly. Um, and they're also trying to make an active duty system work for individual reservists. So while it might be frustrating, the some of the paperwork that we have to collect and submit to be able to get paid, it, we have to do it for a reason. It's it's not just for grins and giggles. All right, let's talk about MyPERS. MyPERS is actually one of my favorite uh, websites that we use as IRs, and here's why. While you can CAC into MyPERS, um, and when you do CAC into MyPERS, it's pretty easy to CAC in. Uh, you can use multiple different browsers. Um, it's pretty stable. Uh, but you can also access most of what MyPERS does with a username and password. So if you don't have a password set up, highly recommend you do that. Um, you can see there where I'm uh, pointing to where it says profile incidents and messages. Notice that fourth bullet says change password. So go in there and make sure you have an updated password and username and have that saved in your password keeper because using a username and password, you can actually access MyPERS on your smartphone. You can certainly get to it from any personal computer or tablet. It's pretty awesome. You also want to go into that profile and make sure you have a good personal email and .mil email in the system. Those sometimes don't flow over correctly from virtual MPF, so you really want to make sure that you have good emails um, in the MyPERS system because anytime an incident is updated, the system is going to email both of those, uh, both your personal and .mil to let you know. If you're not getting those emails, you could have incidents sitting there waiting for further action from you uh, for a long time. So um, if you do have a good personal email in there, but you find you are not receiving those emails, there, then you probably need to go into your personal email account, whether you know Google or Hotmail or whatever, and make sure any .mil extension email addresses have been whitelisted so that they don't get sent to spam or junk. Um, as I said, set up for smartphone access. It's pretty cool. It uses a two-factor authentication, works beautifully. Um, take pictures of your receipts and submit the whole thing straight from your phone. But where you want to look, the, the golden link on this page is the one where I've got it highlighted for IMA management, because that's where you're going to get to the reserve pay links. That's where you're going to get to travel reimbursement for medical help from the Rio medical team. Um, and, and we're putting more and more stuff there all the time. In fact, pretty soon you're going to be doing your orders requests through there as well. So IMA management, which is in that list there down the side under learn more about, that takes you to those dedicated links to make sure that you do submit things into the correct queue and it goes to the right technician. I also do want to point out that search bar at the top is a predictive search. You can start typing and it'll give you things that match. Um, so if you aren't finding what you need, that search function uh, works pretty well. So if you need to submit documentation to the Reserve Rio uh, pay office, what we call the RPO, you are going to use these dedicated links, all right? That it's really important that you don't just do like an email us from the incidents page of MyPERS because it's going to float around the virtually, digitally, ARPC and Rio for a while before it lands in the right queue. Those dedicated links make sure it goes directly to the correct technician um, and it's going to speed up the process for you a lot. 
So if you are in my PERS, if you uh, go to the IMA management page, like that top image, and click on Rio Reserve Pay Request, that will pull up these links right here. Those links are also available on the HQ Rio website, and that's what that bottom um, screenshot shows you. It's, it's on the tab that says contacts and links. So you, these are links. So you'll go to that, um, that tab of that page and you can click directly and it'll redirect you right over to my purse. Let's talk about arrows for a minute. Now, um, I, I just mentioned that pretty soon we're going to be submitting our orders requests through my purse. Um, we'll be doing your training on that very soon. Um, however, that doesn't mean you're not going to use arrows anymore. It just means you're not going to put the request into arrows. OK, so I still need to talk to you about getting into arrows and making sure you can do that because you need to uh, do that to track your orders, to make sure that they've gotten approved, to print them out, to certify them, etc. So you can go through the Air Force portal. I actually just Google arrows are um, the link comes right up. I, I use it in Chrome with no issues. It is CAC enabled or an established password. However, most people don't use the password anymore because once you CAC in, you can't go back to password access. So it's most likely going to be a CAC in type situation. All right, so um, a couple of things that I want you to keep in mind as far as arrows works. Once orders have been submitted and created, you can track the status of them in arrows, right? You'll, you'll go to applications in progress. So you don't need to send an email to the dead or the orders writers or whatever to see what's going on. You can start there by seeing in the applications and pro process what step those orders are on. Um, you'll definitely want to go to the My Account tab that's across the top and make sure you have a personal email in there. Same same speech on personal email uh, that I gave about my purse because when your orders are approved, you'll get an email notification if you have that email address in there. Arrows is compatible with most browsers. I use it all the time on Chrome on a PC and I have no problem. If you are using Internet Explorer, remember the compatibility view that and that's kind of a deal with most dot mill websites. Um, for most people, it's not going to work on a Mac or a Linux machine. Um, I will say as a side note, if you are Mac dependent and you don't have a PC, um, go to the Air Force portal, search desktop anywhere and yes, it's kind of a pain to get set up, but once you do, it's amazing. Get desktop anywhere set up on your on your Mac, and then you can access all this stuff with no problem. It creates a virtual um, dot mill network machine right on your personal computer. Okay, um, this is this might seem like a little weird, tiny thing to mention about arrows because I I'm not going to take you through the whole orders request process or anything in here, um, but this is something that it took me a while. Uh, to figure out if you ever have to get a modification, a mod on a, on a set of orders, you may have found it difficult to figure out how to print the initial orders. Because if you hit the little printer icon, um, if orders have been modded, it's only going to print the mod. Well, you need to print your actual orders, right? To submit for travel reimbursement, um, to pre-certify or certify orders. Um, so if you don't have a mod, you can just click the printer button. It'll pull up your orders. If you need to print both the initial orders and the mod, you're going to click the tracking number, not the printer icon, the tracking number of your orders, which pulls up the little pop up you see here. And then from display section, you'll use that drop down and go to history modifications. When you do that, it pulls up this image right here and you'll see where it says mod number one and mod number zero. Well, mod number zero, those are your initial orders. So if you click print next to that, that will pull up your full orders. Now, as of right now today, while I'm recording this, Arrows has changed um, its PDF settings for when you pull up your orders and they're now locked. So you can't go in and type your um, information in to like certify long tour orders, which I'll show you in a minute, um, which is kind of a pain, unfortunately. Um, I do want to see, I do want to point out real quick here though, above um, the printer icons and the tracking numbers and the status, it's kind of covered up by an arrow, but there's a, a little tick box that says mask SSN. If you check that and then hit the printer icon um, or the tracking number and print, it will mask the SSN um, on the orders that it pulls up as a PDF. So you don't have to go in and redact your own PII, which is nice. Uh, anyway, so for, you're gonna have to kind of create workarounds here. Um, it, 
once you start getting to the point where you need to print orders and certify them long tour orders um, because you can't edit the orders to be able to type on them anymore or digitally sign them. So it's going to have to be done by pen and ink. Um, hopefully that will change soon, but as of today, that's the current system uh, that Arrows has in place to protect um, the validity of the PDF orders. Okay. Now let's talk about getting paid for a short tour. So short tour, we're talking 30 or fewer days. So your AT, that's obviously a short tour. Or if you go on RPA or MPA or school tour or anything else, that is 30 or fewer days, all right? Um, it is now mandatory as of 1 December of 2020, it's mandatory to use the Todd C, the tour of duty certification function in Arrows to certify those orders. You don't print them out get them signed and then submit them in my purse anymore. Um, let me tell you why we're doing that. I always like to explain why. <laughs> so I, I mentioned all of the manual processing of pay that has to happen. Um, well, part of the issue there is that it's, all of that manual processing takes time. When we were able to print out orders and certify them, you know, digitally, um, digital signatures or what signatures and submit them to my PERS, it took about 10 minutes per order for a technician to process those short tours to send them to pay. <clears throat> However, the Todd C, which happens automatically through arrows, those are pulled down in a batch. So, you know, on a given day, they might have 100 uh, short tours that have been certified need to be sent to pay. That batch gets pulled down and it takes about five to 10 minutes to process the entire batch. So you can see the amount of man hours that are saved for our technicians if uh, by making the use of Todd C mandatory. What that also means is that all the other stuff that has to be manually processed is going to get done more quickly because our you know technicians aren't spending time working something that could be done automatically. So that's why Todd C has to be used. Um, and here's what happens. <clears throat> you are going to send, hopefully to your supervisor, the person who can certify that, yep, you did the work and you were there. If you have issues, you know, say your certifier or your, excuse me, your supervisor is deployed or on leave or whatever and you need to get paid, if you can find an E5 or above who can legally verify that yes, you were there and yes, you did the work, then you can send that certification to them. When you go in to do the Todd C, you're going to enter an email address. So, and it can be a civilian email address, military email address, it doesn't matter. But it, that needs to go to somebody who can legally certify that you were, you know, where and when you worked um, and rank E5 or above if we're not talking about your supervisor. The certifier does not need an Arrows account, which is great. It's actually a pretty cool little system. When you put their email in and you finish, you know, digitally sign the certification, it's going to send an email to that person with a link. It's rather a long link. Uh, they uh, click on that link or copy and paste it into a Chrome browser because it works best on Chrome. Um, and they type in, you know, basically a thumbs up. Yes, member did it. They sign it and that's it. It takes 20 seconds. Um, the link can expire. So you do want to make sure that um, the person you are sending it to knows it's coming and that they need to take care of it quickly. After it is signed by the supervisor or certifier, it will automatically route to your detachment to an approving official. They will sign it and then it goes to the RPO and it's much, much faster than it would have been had you done it the old fashioned way. So here's how you're going to do a Todd C. You'll go into arrows and then you, uh, from that side menu, you will select create certification. And then you're going to find the orders. You may need to sort descending because for some reason the default here is to start at the oldest orders. So if you're an old timer like me, that's a screenshot from mine. I have orders back from 2012. <laughs> so, but the little red and blue arrows, if you if you select, I think it's the blue arrow, it'll put it from newest first instead of having to go through, you know, record after record after record. All right, you're going to um, select create next to the appropriate set of orders. You're going to fill in the information, and this is very similar to what you filled in on the form itself, right? I left here, I traveled here on this day, I reported for duty, um, my spouse wasn't with me, blah, blah, blah. All right, type in the email for whomever you want to send it to certify. Should be your supervisor, but it doesn't have to be. 
You're going to save and sign. Be patient. Sometimes these digital signatures take a little while um, and then it will shoot right off um, and turn into an email with a link sent to your supervisor or certifier. That's it. So what the certifier does is they receive that email containing the URL, copy or paste the URL into Chrome, um, enter their phone number, digitally sign it and hit submit. Then it goes to the AO and then it goes to pay. Um, now on the HQBO website, we have a quick guide for what I just showed you, the Todd C. We also have a certifier's quick guide that has these troubleshooting tips on it because sometimes people do run into issues. One of the problems is that they don't receive the email. Sometimes that's because it has a long URL in it and the comm folks at that base have limited emails with really long links. So um, if that happens, send it to a, um, excuse me, send it to a personal email address, you know, like a Gmail or whatever. And then what I've had people do is go into the URL from there and put like two or three spaces in it to break it up and then forward it to your dot mil and then take the spaces out and copy and paste it. And there you go, You're good to go. Um, some bases don't have the arrows our website whitelisted, which is a shame and I'm hoping we're working on that. But if that happens, um, then the supervisor won't be able to certify because it won't take them to that website if they're on the Nipper network uh, or VPN. Um, so one of the things they can do is, is disconnect from VPN um, and just use Wi-Fi or forward that email and that link to a personal computer and just use a CAC reader and do it that way. All right, that's the short tour, getting paid. All right, let's talk about long tour. This is 31 or more days, all right? So this is totally different. Um, and, and I actually got caught up in this when I first started this job because I'd never done orders of more than 30 days before. But you might think, hey, it would, you know, if I do a two week annual tour, you have certified at the end and then you get two weeks of pay, you know, when you get paid in a couple of weeks. But if you're on, you know, a 365, you certainly don't want to wait and get paid, you know, at the end of the year, you need to kick off pay coming twice a month. So this is how you do that. You're going to pre-certify your orders to start pay on or after the first duty day. You can't do it before you report in and start working. So the first duty day is the best time to do that. And then you will submit it in my PERS via the long tour link. And then on the last day of orders, you're gonna fully certify those orders and then send in a final certification, um, you know, just like you would have a short tour um, on the last duty day via the long tour link, all right? Here are a couple of little caveats. If your dates change, if you curtail your orders or if you modify to extend them, you need to send that into the long tour link so that they can change the date at which your pay ends because that when you pre-certify those orders, that's what they do. They say, okay, Colonel Carl is starting her, her duty this day and she's working all the way you know, six months from now. So we load into the system to pay her twice a month for the next six months. Well, if I curtail my orders at four months, but I don't tell them, guess what? That pay is going to keep coming. And guess what? They're going to want their money back. So it's a whole lot easier if you just let them know those orders have been curtailed so they can stop the pay on in time. But on the, you know, on the flip side, if you extend and don't tell them, like let's say I extend it to eight months. Well, my pay is going to stop at six months because the RPO doesn't know that I modified those orders. So I need to send the mod over to them so that they can extend the date at which that pay ends. Otherwise, I'm going to stop getting paid and that's no fun. OK. All right. Um, this is how you pre-certify your orders. It's actually pretty simple. You're going to fill in everything you would normally fill in except for your uh, blocks C and D, like when you left because because you, you haven't left yet, right? So you're going to put you know the day in A and B when you left and you left your home of record, went to your duty station, blah, blah, blah. You're going to circle the little things about your spouse and occupying government quarters. You're going to get it signed. You're going to sign it and then you're going to submit that uh, to the RPO using the long tour link. All right, changing gears. Now we're going to talk IDTs and this is UTAPs. <coughs> so the the by far the best way to get to UTAPs is to log into Aerozar first. When you do, there's a drop down menu and you can select member, which would take you to the Aeros functions, or you can select UTAPs, which will redirect you to the UTAPs uh, website. Much, much better than trying to reach it on the direct link. I know that makes no sense, but that's the way it is. All right. 
Then you are going to follow the prompts and select the IMA PIRR calendar. Here's a lot of caveats here about UTAPS because it is a finicky website. It works best in Internet Explorer. I know Internet Explorer isn't even supported anymore, but that's how it was created. You need to make sure to turn on the compatibility view. Uh, last time I heard if you use an edge, you keep having to re-enter your pin, which is kind of a, a pain. Um, now, th and this, this is sort of officially from the UTAPS folks at AFRIC, that some functionality is lost in Chrome or Mozilla. I personally use it in Chrome and I haven't had an issue, but when in doubt, use IE. Compatibility view, turn off your pop-up blocker, and keep in mind that user accounts will sometimes lock out. So if, if you haven't logged into UTAPS um, in 30 days, sometimes, not all the time, because sometimes I don't get locked out and I don't go in there very often at all, but um, if you do, if you are on the list of people that get locked out, if it's between 30 and 90 days, it's going to prompt you to answer some challenge questions that are set up on your account profile in UTAPS. If you haven't set those up, then after 30 days, then you're going to have to call the help desk to get back in, or if it's been longer than 90 days. So you really want to make sure that you fill out those challenge questions because that certainly gives you another two months of wiggle room not to have to deal with calling the help desk to get back in. And if you're one of these people that gets locked out often, put in a calendar reminder, hey, log into UTAPS, you know, once a month, and then it'll keep it from happening and it doesn't take long. Again, like most of these .mil websites, it's not compatible with Macs. Um, there is an IE simulator in Safari, but um, it hasn't been tested and, and officially um, we're told that it, it doesn't play nicely. Uh, again, Desktop Anywhere, though, is a great solution for that. This is the new UTAPS calendar. Again, if you're an old timer like me, you're used to the old one. <laughs> so I like to click that little legacy button right there so I can go back to the one that I'm used to looking at. Um, if you have questions about this new calendar, there's a little tiny question mark up there in the corner. If you click that, it gives you a page of instructions about how to use the new calendar. We are also just about to publish uh, a quick guide on setting up your calendar um, and submitting it for approval um, on the HQ Real website, so stay tuned for that. All right, getting paid for IDTs. Again, we're, we're trying to take advantage of these automated processes as much as possible please use UTAPS whenever you possibly can to mark your days worked and send them for pay. It is much faster. I'm talking a couple of weeks faster than sending 40 A's in to the RPO. Um, now UTAPS for supervisors to approve your work, you know, to approve your days and to also send them to pay, that's something where they do need to have an account. Um, there is a help menu on the main page. There's a lot of good information there. Uh, emailing the help desk, you can set up an appointment and talk things through. Get, you know, help your supervisor out to make sure that they get set up to be able to use UTAPS because if you don't and if they have trouble with it, it's your pay that's going to suffer and your points coming over and those points count toward retirement. So it's really important that, that the supervisor can easily take care of what they need to take care of in UTAPS to take care of you. Um, if you're not sure of your position's number of IDTs, the majority of IMAs have 24 periods or 12 days of IDTs on their job, but there are some that have 48 periods, which is 24 days. Um, every once in a while, that doesn't flow correctly over into UTAPS. So if you're ever in doubt, you'll want to double check um, to make sure that the correct number of periods is being reflected in UTAPS. Because when you set up your UTAPS calendar, if you are a 24 period person, you have to load all 24 of those days into the calendar before you can hit submit. It won't let you submit a partial calendar. Same with 48. Um, so you want to make sure that that's right. A lot of our pay issues connected to UTAPs and IDTs are because of this issue right here. So it's important to double check it. When you work the days, you will mark them as worked and then your supervisor marks and sends them to pay. Um, so how you double check that is by logging into UTAPS and making sure that those days show as black on the calendar. If they're black, they've been sent to pay and pay should be forthcoming in about two weeks. If they're not, then you want to check with your supervisor. Hey, did you send my days to pay? If they did, then there's something wrong and you need to call the help desk. If they didn't, then they need to do what they need to do so that you get pay coming toward to you. All right, if UTAPS isn't working, you can always call your debt. Sometimes they can assist with some UTAPS issues, but as a last resort, you can just do a fully signed 40A, okay? Here's what I mean by fully signed. 
there are three places for signatures on a 40A. Think about it the way UTAPS works. You put your days in and you send them to your supervisor and they go, yes, I approve these days as scheduled, right? And then you work them and then you send it to your supervisor and the supervisor goes, yes, this person worked these days and deserves to get paid for it. So you sign it and then your supervisor signs it twice. So that's three signatures, okay? If you do need to submit a 40A, you've exhausted all of your UTAPS capability and you have to do a, um, a 40A, you would submit it to the IMA RPO requests link on MyPERS. It's going to take an additional 10 days um, to process that. So instead of two weeks from being marked paid, you're probably looking at close to a month before that pay hits you, uh, hits your LES. Before you, um, you know, if, it's, if you feel like it's been a while, and you're not sure if it's been processed yet, you definitely want to go to My Pay, uh, which is the DFAS website, and see if there's an LES that's been generated. Because that LES generation is going to happen a few days before the pay hits your checking account. So you can answer your own question if it's been processed, because if an LES is there, the pay is on its way, and then you don't have to bother um, kicking off another incident to ask about that. You'll also want to follow up on your PCARs and make sure that those points have counted on your PCARs as well to make sure that you have a good year. Let's talk a little bit about AT and IDTs in conjunction. Theoretically, you can do the IDTs before or after the AT. I will tell you this. We recommend that you do your IDTs after your AT, and here's why. The whole purpose of doing AT and IDTs in conjunction is to get your travel paid for, right? Because when you do an annual tour, you are entitled to a round trip from your home of record to the location of your AT. So if you fly out and do your AT and then do your IDTs in place, then you're using your return entitlement back from the AT to get home. If you do your IDTs first, and for some reason, gosh, you sprain your ankle or get sick or have something happen at home where you have to cut that trip short and not do your AT, well, now you're gonna be on the hook for the airfare because if you never did your AT, you don't get a travel entitlement. So if you if you start with your AT, you're you know it's a little hedge against that ever happening. Um, if you do your IDTs after, when you do your Todd C for your annual tour, you're going to have to wait for your IDTs to be complete. You taps and arrows talk to each other, and when you put in yes, I'm doing IDTs in conjunction when you do your orders request, the system knows then you're not traveling back until your IDTs are done. Well certifying your orders, you're marking on there that you're traveling home that day. And so you're not traveling home until your IDTs are done. So you're going to have to wait until your IDTs are complete and certify your AT orders then, not just when the AT is finished. Um, so yes, you will get paid faster if the IDTs are first, but mm, you never know what could happen and you certainly don't want to be on the hook for your travel. You're going to be getting two separate payouts. You're going to be getting your pay for your annual tour and you will be getting your IDTs paid, right? Those you'll mark and send for pay in UTAPs, no different, all right? So you wanna double check both systems, both arrows for the Todd C and UTAPs to make sure those days have been marked black and so that you're gonna get paid for them to make sure that they went through, all right? All right, my pay, this is that DFAS website I mentioned. It is CAC enabled. You can create your profile. This is where you're going to see your pay stubs, your leave and earning statements. And there's a lot of really good information here. All right. When you pull up your LES, um, they have they they changed this a few years ago, and it's actually much easier to navigate. They have these tabs: summary, general, entitlements, deductions. If you want to see how much leave you have on the books, it's there. Um, the last one is remarks, which, if you think back to way way our LES is used to look as a PDF, that remarks. That's what that bottom screenshot is. Here's what I think is kind of interesting. Um, the, the PDF version, the printer friendly LES looks like the one at the bottom where it's pretty easy to see because there are tabs and indents and carriage returns. But for the, for the viewable one on the website where you click on the remarks tab, it, it's just one long paragraph. And I find it very difficult to find what the information I'm looking for. Mainly tell me, you know, what duty I did and what days I'm getting paid for here. So if you have trouble reading the remarks to get the information you need, click on that printer friendly LES and it'll pull up the a PDF that's a much easier one to read as far as the remarks go. Okay, 
So it's going to show you how much you have for that FY, so you can track your fiscal year requirement. It's also going to show you what you got paid for on that paycheck. So you'll see what's highlighted there. This particular paycheck was for um, an IDT that I did on the 16th of August. Um, and for that total performance for FY19 um, has my, I, I was in a 48 period uh, job at the time. And um, looks like I, you know, how many points of this and AT versus everything else. So it's all, it's all loaded on there for you to be able to see. I'm just gonna go through some reminders now. Um, please, please don't go too fast. Make sure all of your stuff is set up. I, I am so guilty of this. I had to leave cell back that was just a hot mess and I, I had to apologize up and down to the technician who had to deal with my submission. Make sure you have all the signatures. Make sure you're attaching the receipts. Make sure you have a copy of your orders. Make sure they're the right orders. Um, is your address correct? That's really important. Uh, what about dependents? Wh whether you get paid with or without dependents, has that changed? Have your kids aged out or you know, were you married and now you're not? Um, if so, then you need to change your BAH dependency rates. Is your, uh, have your bank accounts changed? Because you certainly don't want pay to try to hit direct deposit on an account that you don't use anymore, right? It all goes back to double checking in a couple of weeks after you've submitted all that stuff, did you get paid? And you should, for, if, you, if the money doesn't hit your account, then you need to go to the MyPay website and see if that LES has been generated. If, if it's past the time where it should have been and you don't see an LES, then you certainly want to reply back to that ticket in MyPERS to get an update. Um, <laughs> I love my fellow IMAs so very much, but um, just because we've been IMAs for a long time doesn't mean we necessarily know what we're talking about. So um, there's a lot of crowdsourcing of information on the Rio Connect app and on Facebook and talking with other IMAs in your unit. Um, when in doubt, double double check with Rio, with the RPO, we will tell you the, the real deal. Make sure you use the correct MyPERS submission links so that your reimbursement or your pay requests go to the right people. Um, try not to do, you know, I shouldn't have to submit this and that and whatever. There's a reason. There's always a reason. They're not going to ask you for a bunch of additional stuff just to make your life difficult. Um, trust me, the technicians feel that way as well. Okay. Um, it's frustrating for them. And this is just a little thing for me because kindness to me is important. But whenever I submit anything, you know, if I submit for a leave number, or if I submit orders to get paid or, or whatever, um, there's a place in that MyPERS submission to write a little note. It's not going to kill you to say, hey, thank you so much for processing this. We really appreciate everything you do. Um, you know, sometimes I think some, you know, the technicians may only hear from people when they're upset. Um, but they work ridiculously hard to process all this stuff in ways that and, and in ways and with systems that were not meant to be used this way. Um, there are certainly changes, uh, hopefully forthcoming uh, soon, sooner rather than later, that will allow a lot of this stuff to happen more easily. But in the meantime, they're working with these systems just like we're working with these systems. All right. So if you can do your part and make sure that what you're submitting is correct and that you've you know, got all the right paperwork and everything on there, um, they will do their part and process it as quickly as they possibly can to get you paid. Um, just a reminder that there are a lot of resources on the HQ Rio website, quick guides for a lot of this stuff, and we are always adding more. Other training, um, you know, virtual training sessions. The IR guide has a lot of good information on it. You know, I think some people have a tendency to go and ask other IMAs rather than go to the guide. Um, start with the with the real official guidance and training uh, and guides that are available on the website. And then if you need more information, my goodness, we are always there and other IMAs are there too. Um, make, you know, but make sure that you're actually touching the, the official documentation and guides and regulations so that you're getting the right information that you need so that you can get paid. All right, that's it for our um, briefing on how to get paid fast. And if you... Um, have any questions whatsoever. I'm sitting here trying to put my face back on the screen. It's not working very well. There we go. <laughs> Yay. Um, so that's everything. The slides and this video will be available on the HQ Rio website on the training page. Um, so please take advantage of that and any other trainings or guides that we put forward. And um, yeah, just bear with the systems we have. We're bearing with them as well. Um, but for the most part, if you you know, make a little 
effort and and put yourself you know follow the the guidance that we've given you you'll be able to do what you need to do so that not only do you get to serve and we can try to make it easy for you to serve but you can get paid for it too thanks so much see you next time